new microphone setup that has some kinks to work out because it's well it just keeps talking about feet quietly uh you know when nobody's really paying attention anyway it is indeed oh elden ring time again for that ring so elden I've almost completed it now, after 130, which probably equates to about 120 hours. Hey Art, always nice to see you. And also, hey Gwen, I can't remember who, who you are of the many people who go by different names in different uh, avenues. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, 139 hours, which probably equates to like 125 hours, roughly. Uh, if we add up all the times I left this running while doing dishes and then forgetting. As you can sh see, Chanterelle has had some kind of terrible disaster befall her face. By which I mean I've started wearing helmets. And I am, at last, in the Halig tree. Frankly, I'm looking forward to being done. I'm so, ugh, like... I've got lots of plans for what to do when I'm finally free of this fucking in-game, but here's the bright side. This is probably the most beautiful part of the game that I've seen so far, and I've seen, as you can see, quite a lot of it. So I'm starting to suspect that the way you're supposed to play this game... Hey Jules. I mean, acrylic spatter. I need to get a mute button for when I name people's real names. Anyway, I... Yeah, so I think that the, maybe you're supposed to play through the critical path of the game and do a little bit of fun exploring whenever you feel like it, rather than just actually rinse every single component of the entire game. Anyway, my current goals are to go here and fight a fire giant so that I can get fire, so that I can burn down the god tree that everyone worships. But there's also a secret second god tree over here in the north that you have to jump through a ton of hoops to gain access to. This whole area is a secret bonus area, which allows access to this secret bonus area, which is where I am now, and I'm about to explore. I have downed most of the game's primary bosses, and literally, like, a hundred secondary bosses or more. As you can see, I've gathered many of the great runes, which are the sort of linchpin bosses that you, you, bite, you fight, you get their runes. Still a sorcerer. Uh, I've been mostly fighting with the Moonlight Greatsword, but I decided to try out uh, St. Trina's sword and see what it's like to turn people to sleep, because I think that's just funny. See, the thing about burning down the god tree is that there's kind of a, a question about what is and is not the right thing to do throughout this entire situation. The system of the universe is busted. Um, and so the objective of the game is to either fix what fix the problem with it, or to redesign it from the ground up to make it not be busted in the first place, or bustable in the first place. Um, that's a World of Warcraft reference, yay! That took me a second, but uh, no, there is a secret medallion that you can get that you activate in a secret lift that takes you to a secret second location that the lift wouldn't otherwise take you to. But I just... Like, I got to this area earlier and I was like, I think I'll save this for streaming tonight because while it is very, very Rivendell as depicted in the Lord of the Rings films, or possibly, you know, mixed with uh, the other elf home that I can't remember the name of because COVID drained my brain away and now I can't remember proper nouns. A weirdly specific problem to have. Anyway, I'll probably switch back to the Moonlight Greatsword after I put some things to sleep and just realise it's less efficient than just slaughtering everything in the first place, but it's quite lovely. It's also rotting. This is probably the origin. Oh, that's right, I stopped before the first boss you couldn't solo. Uh, I had an easy time with it, but I have just been freely summoning spirits for every fight, so it wasn't, like... Like, I didn't have myself uh, a self-imposed difficulty challenge like you did. I just went and I beat him on second try <laughs> with the help of my Mimic Tear, which when you are wielding one of the best two-hander weapons in the game, having two people wielding the best two-hander weapon in the game is especially effective. So this over here, the Halig Tree, is where a certain deity was like rotting, I guess. And that's the origin of the rot, which somehow is primarily only a problem over here on the other side of the world. 
this whole region is corrupted by by the rot of Melania. Melania supposedly lives in the Halic Tree, so I'm not sure how transmission is achieved there. But perhaps we'll find out as we explore. There's also... There are rot zombies here. Oh, I hate these things. They, they swing so late, I fall for it every time. Anyway, so my primary tactic up until now has been to use... Well, my primary tactic here appears to be to get blasted by these things. But yeah, ah, god. 130 hours of this game and these guys still trip me up with, their, with that late swing. Uh, I think they're the only thing in the game I've, I've fought so far that has two full starts and an extremely long <laughs> wind-up. Um... I should probably pay attention to what I'm doing. Anyway, it takes like three hits to get these guys put to sleep, but it also takes four hits to kill them, so... Kind of makes me wonder why I'm bothering with the whole put them to sleep thing. Anyway, there's loads of rot zombies around, and there's these guys who are the misbegotten, I think. What the f- where the shit did he come from? I've walked through this zone like three times now just while exploring, and that's the first time one of those bosses has shown up. I'm starting to think it might be a good idea to go back to my successful tactic, the one I was enjoying using, where I was uh, just destroying people with a two-hander bigger than I am. Let's see if I can put him to sleep. Oh, that's weird. That's really weird. I'm sure I put these things to sleep in like three hits previously. Is he up there? I bet... Oh, that's... Huh. There's rot zombies. Hmm. Rot zombie is my famous... Is my favourite, like, classic kind of, like... You know, rock goth... Musician. That's a stretch. That's a terrible joke. These things definitely go to sleep if I hit them three times. So these are the rot zombies, which I have not seen since. My vigour seems low. I have so much vigour. Um... I have 30, which is adequate. I've gotten this far with that much, so I don't really think it's a problem. It's just that I'm currently used to fighting with a very different fighting style that I'm currently using. I switched it up literally right before I stopped playing earlier. Because I wanted to see what the sleep effect was, since I've had access to it for ages. Uh, and it seems to be that if you put them to sleep, you get like a much more powerful critical attack than a backstab or a riposte. It probably feels lower than it is because I don't really wear armor very much. Um, I've just been dodging the entire game. Hey, what happened to the other one? Hmm. Anyway, if you put them to sleep and then hit them an extra time, they wake back up, so... It's kind of a flawed tactic for that purpose. I'm not 100% sold on it, but it's an interesting new addition to the... Uh, to the whole situation. But yeah, um, it seems like the dodge rolling is much more forgiving than in previous FromSoft games, so there it is again. The world's slowest axe attack. In fact, why don't I just... I have this for these occasions. Yeah, I'm going to switch back to my old tactics. So, when I first got to the Halig tree, I appeared way up high in the branches, and it was a huge pain in the ass to get down to the bottom. This exemplifies something about the difference in design philosophy that FromSoft have had for this game as compared to um, their previous games. I feel... I think it's fair to say that Dark Souls was always fair. In fact, that's usually the thing that like, I've said about it whenever I've been a, a Dark Souls apologist, is 
It's difficult, but it's fundamentally fair. It's never actually unfair to you. And occasionally as I play through Elden Ring, I find situations that I think are actually outright unfair. I don't... I don't normally... Like, I try not to sound like a scrub, but I genuinely think that um, there's just quite a few situations where it's it's not just mistuned, it's actively frustrating and, like irritating and kind of badly designed um there's plenty of times in dark souls where you fall for a trap or something tricks you or you're lulled into a full sense of security and then destroyed but you can learn to spot those things ahead of time and that is part of playing the game is figuring out how to spot those things when they're coming up ahead and the other part of playing the game is um the fact that once you know what those things are, then it's not usually such a problem. You know, once you know how to deal with the Anorlando archers, you that's just kind of not a problem anymore. And um, so part of the game is figuring out how to deal with that and and it just it doesn't feel frustrating. Whereas trying to get down the upper branches of the Halig tree felt outright frustrating. Quite massively so. I've not fought one of these on a balcony before. I'm used to just dodging out of the way of everything. Oh, that reminds me, yeah. So I committed early on to the... Um, the lightweight roll dodge timing, and that's what I've learnt. Um, I don't remember what getting the Firekeeper's Eyes was like. I did it in every single playthrough, but I don't, I don't remember what the process of it was. But, kind of, I don't know. There's just, it feels like there's something different, something almost clumsier, something less careful. Uh, but also meaner, almost cruel, um, rather than the harsh but fairness of um, of Dark Souls. Is what the falling down the pit and landing on graves? Oh, the secret zone, you mean? Uh, not sure what you're referring to. Oh, the, uh, the Swordmaster's easy to beat, though. But, um... Anyway, like the first time you find uh, the followers, they um, I'm not sure why my timings are so off. I, I feel like every time I'm streaming, I'm like, guys, I promise I'm not normally terrible at this. Um, I made it this far, fair and square, didn't I? But um. First time you the first time you go down to the the underground underworld space there is a whole thing of archers who can one shot you and they do it from very far away and they're invisible until you get close etc 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 it's just a lot hot wait where's the guy where's the lion man Huh. Did he fall off? Well, anyway. You say they only one-shot you if you're barely wearing armor, but I specifically went and put a bunch of armor on to go back and try and fight them again. Um, I armored myself significantly more and switched to mid-rolling as well, and I still got uh, one-shotted by them.
but it's not so much the one-shotting so much as the perfect accuracy through foliage where you can't even see them. I don't know. The other people I've talked about it with had a few had the same problems with it as me. Um, I don't know. I just feel like there's a lot more points in this game where things feel bullshit and frustrating and unfair, where that's not the case in Dark Souls games. But, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I am not the be-all and end-all. Yeah, that's kind of what part of the problem is. They stack the modifiers against you quite harshly. Um, can, he even, can, he, can he come in here? Or is he just stuck on the guy behind him? Do you know, this is literally the first one of these I've fought in the game that I didn't beat first or second try. <laughs> It's just because I'm up on this shelf. I mean, yeah, I mean, I know that getting one-shotted is a build thing, but I did respec to massively increase my hit points uh, and wear hit point boosting items and wear a bunch of armor, and I was still getting one-shotted by a bunch of things in the, like, early and mid-game. And then that, of course, meant that I wasn't uh, wearing... I wasn't doing anywhere near as much damage anymore, which meant that I was still taking forever to fight things. That red glow is a uh, wondrous physic buff, which essentially means that when I take a hit that would have killed me, I get back something like 25% of my hit points. Um, I have it combined with the uh, the next hit you take is massively reduced in damage. One, and I chug a lug that when I'm going into harsh situations. Whoop. Now, see, what happened there is that my controller has A and B and X and Y switched because it's a Nintendo controller, because all three of my Xbox controllers have broken in the past three months, including the new one I bought to replace the other two, which lasted exactly long enough for the warranty to be up and then broke. I mean, I don't really care about rune, lo rune loss anymore at this point, because it takes me something like, um, I think it's like 120,000 runes to level up right now. So the only times I have enough runes is when I'm blitzing through an area and nothing is a threat to me. Or um, or when I fight bosses or pop uh, hard runes. Anyway, so the various different kind of groups and areas in the game, the different kinds of enemies all seem to... Some of them seem to be things that just naturally exist in the world, like humans, for example, and uh, Albinorix, who were, of course, created by wizards for, you know, wizard reasons. And, uh... Something else that I don't remember. Uh, oh, no, the demi-humans, that's what I'm thinking of. And, um... Like, God, it is the most satisfying thing in the world to slap these guys out of the air. <laughs> oh, is there something down there, or am I about to be tricked? No. I, perhaps I will jump off later. Did this guy jump off and die? Let's find out. Okay, so that's that's a survivable fall. 
That's good to know. Anyway, so these guys are the Misbegotten, which is one of the various groups of kinds of thing that exists in the world, along with various other kinds of guy. And the Misbegotten are people who've become cursed in some way, much like several of these groups are. And uh, the effect of this curse upon them is to make them all bestial more slowly, but in a different way to the Omen, who are also cursed, in such a way that they become slowly more bestial over time. Um... The omen possibly are to do with proximity to the crucible, which is the origin of all life from which the Erd tree itself has sprung. Oh shit. There is an angry plant around here somewhere. Probably upstairs. Anyway, this is the first, I think, of the mega dungeons that I've actually had the chance to show off on stream, so I hope it's an enjoyable experience to explore. Or, well, we're not in the mega dungeon yet, but we're near, near it. Hi, guys. Hmm. It's a good thing I have AoE spells. Although this one's not as good as the one I stopped using. You know what? You know what's also AoE, even if it's not a spell? It's a really big sword. I cast. Heavy swing. I cast. Majestic stab. I cast. Obliterative strike. I think these things used to explode into, into rot back in the other place, but I don't really remember. Uh, well, I remember learning a bit about the Misbegotten somewhere. I think I have a. I've got some Misbegotten ashes. Uh, the misbegotten are held to be a punishment for making contact with the crucible and from birth they are treated as slaves or worse. So proximity to the crucible presumably invokes this curse, although that's only something people in the world believe. That doesn't necessarily mean it's true. I think I have another misbegotten ash somewhere. Um, see, when you play extremely completionist, you just, you end up with shit tons of stuff. <laughs> uh, I think I've gotten some misbegotten weapons somewhere. Uh, that, that, the big ones use these. The maltreated misbegotten, steeped in resentment. These weapons are swung wildly and relentlessly. So the misbegotten are mistreated. Uh, there's, there's a smaller misbegotten axe somewhere. I think I've got three of them because I need to sell some of my doubles. Ah, here we go. Oh no, that's the vulgar militia. Oh, just a whole other thing. I actually have a pet theory with zero evidence behind it that the vulgar militia are the... Like devolved, degenerated, whatever, uh, descendants of the inhabitants of the Eternal Cities who have, uh, who are living on the surface rather than in their ancestral underground homeland. Okay, so that's where we climbed up previously. And this drops down to the rooftop, which was the rear accessible portion from where we fought the giant guy, where we didn't fight him rather. Okay, so if my HP is low, then where should I be grabbing it otherwise? Because my stats are these. I could sacrifice some mind, but I do a lot of spell casting. I could sacrifice some endurance, but I mean, I've got a big weapon that I'm trying to use. I suppose I could drop my strength back down, but then I'll lose on some damage. I could drop my intelligence a bit, but I like having a big brain, you know. Where am I supposed to get the extra HP from, huh? Huh? Also, a bunch of my strength is coming from the fact that I'm wearing a strength-boosting hat. Now let's see if I can find out where the giant plant that shoots laser beams is. Because there's always one. Oh, there's two. <laughs> Everything I say is a lie. I can get the drop on him. I mean, yeah, but I could just I could just wear I could just go back to wearing the extra HP hat, which gives me a small boost, or I could start using some of the vast numbers of these that I've got to boost my HP that way.
Oh, shit. They're like spiders. You're never more than six inches away from a misbegotten. I want to fight these things without waking up the big one. Yeah, but the problem is, I would if, if I switch now, I would have to completely relearn all of my dodge timings, and while I'm not making a good show of myself on stream, um, I'm normally dodging just fine, uh, playing by myself. Hmm. I suppose I could get rid of some of them. Perhaps I will go and respec live on stream. But it's just, it's kind of irritating. Like, I occasionally hit these bottlenecks. I'll make 20 hours of progress and clean out an entire zone and kill three or four, like, ordinary bosses and one major boss and be fine. And then in the next zone, I'll run into a bottleneck and be, like, oh, is it stuck. Okay, so if I'm going to start with like 40 Vigor, and I'm going to want... Mm, if I go for 20, that's not quite enough. If I go 22, I've got enough to cast most of the spells I need. I don't use the spells very often, but when I do use them, it's kind of necessary. i am probably survive on 30 Endurance. I'll put this back to 20. This back to 20, and then intelligence all the way back up to 70, because I like having 70 in intelligence. <gasps> I can't afford it! Wow. Huh. Yes, I had 70 intelligence. Do you have any idea how much magic damage I was doing? Vast, vast amounts. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go with 35 vigor for now. That gets me up above 1,000 at least. Um... 70 int, and then I've got one more to put here because I like it to be nice and tidy. See, my main problem with uh, this zone at the moment, I think, is that generally speaking, I've been dodging like a motherfucker, and I, I am now less capable of that because if I dodge here, I will fall to my death. Um, I do kind of want to put my hat back on, though. Oh yeah, check out my amazing hat collection. I've got most of the hats in the game. One of each, apart from some doubles that I need to sell off. That put me up to medium load again. I could always use the arsenal talisman instead of this, but then I would be sacrificing some hit points. About 40. 40 hit points isn't going to matter, right? So I go back to the arsenal talisman. Swap that out for something. I don't know, maybe I'll just blast these guys to death. Like, fuck it, I need to change up my tactics, obviously. <laughs> Home run! And the crowd goes wild! Hey man, what's up? If I buzz the door, can you let me in? Okay, cool. Anyway, my constant dodging tactics are just stymied by the fact that I will fall and die. Uh, right, so, um, I don't know what the deal with the Misbegotten is, but it definitely seems like there's people who are capable of uh, getting close to the Grail, or not the Grail, the Crucible, without becoming cursed. 
because the Crucible Knights definitely uh, do Crucible stuff and oh fuck I needed a running start for that one oh and they're rot ones as well the worst kind I had a oh hang on I have a I have a sword specifically for this exact scenario where's it gone Can't poison me if it's on fire. It absolutely can. But they are less able to use their attacks in general, which is to my advantage. Also, being set on fire will cancel whatever animation they're currently doing, so if you wait until they start to do an attack, you can... Uh, avoid having that happen to you. See, you no know, god lasers for this guy. I generally found the irritating plants to be less than th less than thrilling foes, perhaps is the way to put it. I think maybe maybe Elden Ring doesn't have a higher proportion of irritating section like irritating kinds of section and irritating kinds of foe. However, it does have a lot more in the way of repeating those ones. You know? You never have to fight the Anor Londo archers twice. Oh, I shouldn't let that happen again. They even have a weak spot and it just does so little. Go on. Actually, I wonder how many... Hmm. Anyway, that's these dealt with, so now I can explore around here more freely and go back to my usually winning uh, big sword strategy. It's me, Sword Wizard. I cast Stab. I think it's not actually inconsistent the reposts i think that the reposts that are effective are the ones that are on things that have vulnerable spots a plant doesn't really have a vulnerable spot to begin with like so a plant doesn't care quite as much if you uh nail it right in the stamen you know um whereas is he gonna uh, Get fucked. See, I love being a wizard, me. <laughs> These guys are actually really easy to kill if you can take them by surprise and you have room to dodge. Because it takes about four hits with the two-hander to stagger them or to get the riposte or whatever, and then you can just do it again. And then they're dead. Ooh, been looking for more of those. Like, my goal has been to play basically as like one of those beating a Dark Souls at level one characters, except that I also have a cannon in my back pocket. So I'll fight everything with my massive sword and whenever I run into a problem that the massive sword can't solve, it's time for the cannon. And then I get my cannon out of my pants and I point it at the opponent and then they regret. Uh, ever having been a problem. Oh, these guys think they're sneaky. Oh, 
that one went off by himself. Very, very convenient. How nice of him to save me the effort. And away with you. But yeah, so what the difference is ultimately between the Crucible Knights and the uh, and the Misbegotten is still a mystery to me. I don't know why these hurt some and don't hurt others. Possibly it ties to the sort of pretty consistent from soft theme of the difference between kind of having a dedication and having an obsession with one being healthy and the other unhealthy. But uh, did I miss anything back there? I went up that ladder and that ladder led up to there, which just led back around to the roofs of here, I think. I try not to think too hard about missing, missing bits when I'm uh, going through a zone that's not like a big, big special castle special. Well, yeah, see, like, the, th the trick is, if you hit them with enough damage fast enough, you can kill them before they can hit you. Oh, I wish I had my magic boost. Oh, fuck. I always forget. I always forget the value of it. But I have a spell that boosts all my other spells' damage, and it's just unfortunate that I didn't bring it. Also, I am using the uh, thingamajig that uh, the spellcasting medium that lets me do extra damage with all my spells at the cost of extra FP. I could even, if I wanted to, equip two different magic damage boosting talismans, but that would maybe be overkill. Once again, as is true with all FromSoft games, arrows are just stabbing, but from a safe distance. Hmm, okay, so I, yeah, I definitely went up and down and around and about. I think I've got everything here. Right, time to continue on. Uh, that's the pulley bow. Where did I get the pulley bow? I think I found it in Leyendel, in the capital, somewhere. Let's have a look. See if we can find some clues. Oh, is it Gelmir? Utilizes a series of pulleys and springs. Blah, blah, blah. Golden Order fundamentalism. Yep. So I have no idea where I found that. The, the other problem with having just every item in the game at this point is that I can't remember where I found most of it. You know, I mean, look how many tears I've got. Nobody needs this many tears. I need to Marie Kondo my shit, but you're not allowed. I mean, Resident Evil usually has limited inventory space, though, so you at least have that limiting factor. But, I know I said this previously, but, like, just look at this place. This is gorgeous. This is absolutely lovely. I really love the visual design of this zone. Um, and not just because I'm an old-school fantasy nerd, but... Definitely, at least partially. Oh, that's interesting. This figure must symbolize... Um, is it Michaela or Melania? The, 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 the unbeatable sword master character, which is one of the, the deities in the game, who, who fights with a prosthetic limb, right? That's the only other one-armed person we've seen, apart from specifically a living... Um, person, yeah, so this must be Melania, which then makes me wonder who's the kid? Who's the child of Melania? I'm sure I had something somewhere about Melania's position in the divine hierarchy, but god, I don't remember. Maybe it was on the prosthetic item, but I gave that to an NPC, because if I don't, I won't be able to get the ending I want because I accidentally fell ass backwardsly into becoming the Lord of Chaos. Which is probably the only appropriate way to become the Lord of Chaos if you think about it. Uh oh, Spirit Summoner. Oh, I can summon Crystallians. I hate those. Melania had a twin sibling, I think. Or 
whichever one we're talking about. I get why, like I get what the point was, but I hate these things. That's the thing. There's so many very, very similar sounding nouns, and I get that it's kind of going for like a like there's an artistic technique that's trying to be achieved there. I did I forget to activate the bonfire? I forgot to activate the bonfire. Oh bugger. But yeah, Marika, Melania, Michaela. And then another one. There's at least one more M named person. This is how I solve my problems. Problems can't catch you if you're faster than they are. But yeah, no, like I get the feeling that's a kind of some, like something a writer does, but it doesn't really fit the like from soft storytelling style simply because like there's only about there's only about 10 proper nouns in a FromSoft game, so if they are, in fact, all the same or very similar, it just makes it fucking impossible to know what you're thinking about or talking about. I think, I think ants are weak to magic. This is true of real life as well. Hmm. Ah, refreshing. Well, once I've cleared out an area, I don't feel any particular desire to get my ass kicked. Like, why risk it if I can just sprint past them and get to where I'm going anyway? It's not like I need the levels. Let's see, how far back can I stand where they can't hit me? This feels promising. I love the little wiggly waggly hand gesture that they make whenever you've run out of magic points for your magic. I should really go down and get whatever these guys have, rather than risking dying in a terrible, horrible way again. But yeah, no, I feel like like, the entrance to this zone is is kind of like, it's like the Animal Londo Archers, except that you have to do it for, like, half an hour. There's just a hundred of the damn things. There's literally tons and tons and tons. There's about 30 or 40 enemies, all of whom have homing uh, long-range attacks. And who are all shooting at you from different branches of the tree that you can't reach. And they can just machine gun you to death, or they can knock you off the branches very easily. So it's just it was just a pain in the arse. It just turned into this kind of sprint past everything, die, repeat, until you eventually sprint past everything enough that you can get through. But fighting dragons and giants is what this game is all about. What is the what is the point of, of playing this game and not indulging massively in martial valor? Okay, there's one behind the building. There's one of them here. Where's the third spirit snail? There it is, on the other side of there. The big magic sword does in fact have a weapon art. Um, it enchants itself to do bonus magic damage and frost damage, like so. And uh, once you have done so, if you use the heavy attack, you do a ranged blasty thing that does lots of cold damage. Oh, I think it does magic damage and frost build up rather. Which is basically the same thing. Dynamic entry! Oh shit. 
<laughs> Snailed it. I might just leave. I don't need to deal with these people. I can just go. I know, basically I feel like a loser for not learning the parrying game, because in every single FromSoft game it's been like, okay, parrying is where it's at. Like, I'm not good at it, but parrying is like the proper way to play, so I will eventually learn to parry. But um, when I tried to do that at the start of this one, I, it just felt so mushy and unresponsive. I could never get... like. I kept being sure I timed the parry correctly, but like the animations didn't line up quite right, or I would, um, or I would successfully get the parry, and then the animation wouldn't end, wouldn't line up correctly for me to be able to actually uh, get the repost off, and it's just there. It was just there. I mean, the buckler usually is. Uh, it's a pretty common trait. But the buckler uh, is for parrying. Oh, hey, that one drops an item. I've never seen that before. Yeah, I mean, that might be kind of the problem. Like, I, I'm used to Dark Souls timing. You know, Dark Souls parry timing and hitboxes and so on. And so when I started playing Elden Ring, the main problem I had was that everything was almost but not quite the same. And therefore everything I asked, oh, okay, I'm all right. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> everything always works out for me. Um, but yeah, so every all, the, all of the dodge timings were just slightly off. Uh, and all of the parry timings were just, just slightly different. So it was just basically impossible for me to get a handle on, and I just decided I wasn't going to bother. Because it's like, what, am I made of time? And then I played it for another 130 hours. So I guess maybe I would have had time after all. How long was this place inhabited before the rock kicked off? Because the rot of Melania is like... Did that kick off Jorin? The Shattering? That's what I need to know. I mean, I assume she will be here. Um, but depending on how far we get through... Like, we're not even in the, the, the Mega Dungeon yet. Although some of the Mega Dungeons are pretty small, like uh, Mount Gelmir was not very large. But if not, I am planning to stream again this week. Although, what day, I don't know for sure. Ooh. It's another, it's yet another item that I will never ever use. Feels a bit wasteful, but you know, c'est la vie. Here, I hear something weird down there. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I know that the, the Misbegotten are uh, like the cursed version of being too, too close to the Crucible and the Crucible Knights are the like correct level of distance from the Crucible being closeness to the Crucible type guys. Um... But all of these sorts of curses are supposed to come from some kind of cosmic sin, right? That's usually the deal. So... Uh-oh. Fun fact, if you get grabbed, you can actually escape from the grab. Um, this, is a, this is a mechanic that was in Dark Souls as well and that nobody ever remembers is there or knows was there to begin with. Um, but if you get grabbed by something that does lots of instances of damage instead of one big chunk of damage, you can usually escape if you just hammer the keys fast enough. I say keys like I'm playing on keyboard. That really would be hardcore. 
I think the Crucible Knights might have been human, because I've gotten various bits of them in my in my gigantic bag full of bits of people that I carry around. Let's see if we can find uh nope, that was that was the boss of the Bell Knights. So, one of some things here. Oh with are those guys deal? Uh Mm, that might be it. There's one, there's one specifically, this one. Celerius Tree, weapon of one of the two honoured as foremost amongst the Crucible Knights. The primordial form of the Erd Tree is closer in nature to life itself. And this spear is blah 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 blah. Yeah, so that doesn't really tell us that, but they don't feel like celestial or elemental kind of like components of reality taken on physical form. They do feel like people people. Like, they're not gods or spirits, even if they aren't, like, humans. Uh, I think I've got... Actually, do I have a, an armor set for the Crucible Knights? I think I do. Helm of the Crucible Knights who served Godfrey, the first Elden Lord. So the Crucible Knights were servants to Godfrey. Um, and this was Soluria's helmet. So, you know, that's... That's that theory proven. I need, I need to get, like, a soundboard, because I'd love to be able to be able to, like... Boom. Theory proven. MLG air horns going off. Pew, 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 pew. Um, but yeah, like, one of the curious things to me about this setting is that everybody seems to worship different bits of it, but then there are also all sorts of different aspects of the same kind of fundamental underlying truth. The Golden Order is the system, but the system flows from the Erd Tree itself and the ring and these things in com like competition or comparison or pairing. And, you know, the the Erd tree grew from the crucible, but they're sort of just different ways of viewing the same thing with the crucible being the unrefined raw form of natural life itself. And the Erd tree being the more structured formalized form, but then also divine grace flows through the fingers. And I still secretly believe that the fingers are going to turn out to be part of some kind of divine figure as in literally the hands of, a, of an entity that have been severed um because that was my original theory oh this is the other side of that place i was a minute ago yeah except that they also do take on different physical forms as well like it's not just Oh, hang on. I thought that one got away already. Oh, well. Alas, alas. Oh, it's one of these bastards. Get to fuck. <laughs> See how it feels, you mad bastard. Hmm. I guess there wasn't anything secret down here. But yeah, so like it's all just different parts of the thing. And then each of like the major NPC chains and sort of like factional concepts in the game, ultimately they're each going to give you one of these things. A mending rune or something similar. Um, which it, with the idea that, well, you're going you're gonna to put the Elden Ring back together, right? Which effectively means you're going to restore reality to its proper course. You're going to fix the system, which was broken. So why not modify it uh, to fix not just the fact that it is currently busted, but to also fix the fundamental flaws in the system itself to begin with? Um, with one of those being, oh, hey, we, we, we changed how death was supposed to work, and that was bad. Um, because death itself being busted is why everyone's fucked up. Okay, I know what those guys' moveset is. They have Comet and they have Azure's Hammer, I think. You know what they don't have? The ability not to get blasted by me from a mi million miles away. Oh shit, there's another one. <laughs> wow, these guys have a lot of hit points. Oh, he turned his back on me. Fool. I'll just deal with his friend real quick. I'm pretty sure these are glintstone scholars, but they're like high level ones. 
I'm not sure what the hierarchy is, really. But, oh, that reminds me, yeah, so all the different kind of groups and factions have their different... ability to just absolutely fuck me up in one hit. Um, all the different groups and factions kind of have their different abilities to... have their different obsessions, right? So, you know, the scholars are obsessed with glintstone magic, and there was some kind of a schism between the the Carrion Sorcerers and the Sorcerers of Rhea Lucaria, except that they're also still kind of together. There's a lot of very interestingly mushy delineations between people who aren't really delineating between one another. Um, but also, if you do too much sorcery, glintstones start to grow inside you. Um, so remember, kids, be sure to get regular annual checkups from your... Uh, Mystical Preceptor. And, uh, you know those giant balls made out of, um, sorcerer crowns? Because, you know, you see these... Uh, these big goofy sorcerer crowns you can take, and they boost your sorcery? Yeah, those are actually, like... to hide the glintstones growing in people's heads. Um... And if they get big enough, they turn into a big ball, which is what happens to Selen at the end of her plotline. By the way, I should probably have mentioned all of these streams will just be absolutely chock full of spoilers, because that's how I roll, baby. These things aren't a patch on real Crystallians. But, you know, there's just, there's a lot of different groups with a lot of different goals and a lot of different motives, but two-thirds of them are actually all trying to do the same thing at the same time in different places. They just have their different views on how it should be. Uh, it's a lot like leftist infighting. It's not, really. I'm not, I'm not enough of, I'm not not a leftist, but I, I don't, I don't have the, I'm too mentally ill, basically, to learn any theory ever, so I just generally think that things like, you know, Healthcare is good and should be provided for free, etc. Um, a lot of really banal but ultimately well-meant opinions like that, since I don't have the time or energy to learn theory. Oh, wow, those guys are really... They're slow but steady, huh? They don't give up. Alright, wizard fight time. See if I can kill that one before he gets too close. Or before the zombies behind me catch up. That's also a consideration. I miss back when I had a much greater ability to do insane amounts of harm. In the game, I mean. I'm not sure what the range on Comet is. That might not hit him. Oh, there we go. Oh, right, the zombies. <laughs> Yeah, so I think the difference between the Omen and the Misbegotten is kind of interesting, because they're both people... Wowzers. Corrupted, ultimately, by... sort of... being too close to something. But, um... The origin of one is less clear than the other. We know that the Misbegotten are connected to being too close to the Crucible. We don't know what the deal with the Omen is. Or maybe we do, and I don't remember, because, my god, there's a lot of, like... Stuff to remember in this game. Guys, can you be cool for like three seconds? This is why nobody likes wizards, and I say this as a wizard, which is why it's okay for me to say. Whew. 
Oh, that was close. But yeah, the kind of like meanness that I'm talking about is the kind of this kind of thing. Like, okay, well, guess what? We're going to put the highest damage ranged attackers you've ever seen, and we're going to put. Not only are we going to put two of them on a narrow bridge ahead of you, we're going to put one of them on the other side of that bridge and one of them right beside the door to blast you in the back when you sprint across the bridge. Like, I'm sitting here thinking of other ways to break this, of like other approaches to this problem, and pretty much the only one I've got is basically to cheat, which I will uh, attempt shortly. Like, I can't really try a ranged battle because they will massively outdamage me, just like they would a melee guy. I can't really try melee because if I sprint across that bridge, I'll get blasted in the back by the other one. And I can't, like, attempt to immediately break left, uh, right around the corner and, um, and beat the one who would be behind me because he's on a separate bridge with a big gap in between. So, like, it's not viable for me to reach him, which means that if I attack one, I'll be under fire from the other. And you might be thinking, well, that sounds exactly like the the problem of the Anor Londo archers, and you solved that pretty fine. Well, the difference there is that the Anor Londo archers are in a really carefully designed space that give you really good cover from them if you figure out which way to run. Uh, and also their attacks don't home in on you. Or for that matter, kill you, like, in one hit. But then again, we've talked about my uh, my hit point difficulties. Now, conservation of stabs is very important. This is established in almost every FromSoft game. You absolutely need to uh, conserve your ammunition because you only get a certain number of... That's not true. I'm completely bullshitting. Which I have a habit of. Anyway, I had a whole bunch of stuff I was going to talk about with regards to the nature of this game world, but as soon as I started playing, my mind went blank. Um, I'm starting to think I might not be a very good streamer. Which is really, um, you know, it really just means I appreciate you all all the more for the fact that you are willing to put up with me rambling and not really saying anything of interest. At least I've got my dodge timings down now, though. I'm mostly not getting killed by shit anymore. See... Which Ash of War would you use to break their stance? Because there's two of them. If you sprint over there and hit that guy with it, that guy's going to kill you. Um, if you lure them up here, stance breaking one of them, the other one will be hitting you. I'm not really sure. Anyway, um, so, right. Time for the other option. Actually, how's my load? There we go, it's fine. Which is rot arrows, which is probably unethical, but I don't particularly care. Shouldn't take too many. I think I got a boss rotted with like five once, but there we go. Now I'm gonna leave. Actually, I should probably just keep wailing on him with normal arrows. <laughs> oh shit, he's close. I suppose this is one way to get him to come to me, rather than fight both at the same time. I guess maybe I should have just pinged with an arrow in the first place. That used to be my tactic for doing this sort of thing. Right, right, but what I'm saying is, how do you, how do you deal with the fact that there's two of them and that they aren't next to each other unless they're over here? Which is already dangerous and risky to achieve. Get fucked. This is why no one likes wizards, you know? I say using, like, fucking... Dipping my arrows into shit before... <laughs> Nobody likes you guys.
Incidentally, there's a really useful farming spot for bones and for fletchings. So once you know about both of those, you can basically get infinite arrows or whatever you like, provided you have the... Well, you get infinite normal arrows and then infinite additional arrows of whatever kind you like, provided you like it. It's probably not really necessary to bother poisoning this guy, actually. I could just kill him the same way as the previous one. It feels satisfying, though. Like he deserves it. I'm surprised there aren't any swords, or at least I haven't found any swords that are, or melee weapons rather, in general, that are also catalysts for spellcasting. Wouldn't it be fun if enemies were given the same mana requirements you are? Did he nut me? What the fuck? I guess, actually, now that I think about it, I have been headbutted by wizards before in this game, which makes sense when wizards form stone crowns naturally as a part of being wizards. What a lovely place. What a lovely face. You can check in any time you'd like, but you can never leave. Elden Ring. I'm stuck here. Forever. I'm starting to think I'll never be finished. I say that, actually, but there's this zone, and then there's to finish this boss, and then that resets this zone and makes a difference, so I'll have to do that again. And then there's also this zone over here, which apparently isn't a secret. It's everyone goes there eventually, but um, after that, finally, eventually, I will be done. Yeah, that makes sense. I used to have, I used to have, well, actually, no, I kind of think in Dark Souls, you, you don't need a different weapon to deal with dogs. They're not that difficult. Um, I feel like the challenges in Elden Ring are much more specifically tuned for specific builds to deal with, though. Um, but I kind of think that's frustrating and often doesn't work because you can't, you will just sometimes run into a challenge that you don't have the build to deal with and then it becomes way more difficult. Like, I'm not averse to some things being more challenging for some builds than others. In fact, I would say that is good design. But some some challenges have been almost impossible uh, for certain builds and not for others. Oh, hang on, actually. I want to go level up. Ladder, 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 roots. But yeah, so I'm not really sure if... Oh wait, hang on, that's not where the... Oh, I'm dumb. Oops. But yeah, I'm not really sure what caused the rot to originate yet. I th I feel like I knew yesterday, but like literally as soon as I start streaming, my brain turns to total mush. Level up, where we gonna put it? Hit points. I feel kind of ashamed that I've gone back to wearing the, the hit point cloak rather than my extremely cool and extremely ugly and horrible mask that I hated but wore because it was pretty much the best flat bonus out of the rest of them. Hey, I wonder if there's anything... No, that would crush me. The bosses with... Oh shit, these guys respawn. Ah, oh, fuck. Hmm. Does he naturally... Can I just sneak past? <gasps> hey, I should stream Thief next. That... It super looks like I'm about to fight a boss. <laughs> I've, I've mostly found Crucible Knights to be a huge pain in the ass. Uh, if you... Oh, hey, I've killed this person before. Hey, hey, I remember you. We went to wizard battle together. Actually, I'm not so sure now. Well, that was not my best showing.
it must have been Loretta that I fought before, because I got Loretta's great bow. Eventually, I'm going to stagger this bitch. You know, some guys have a have the decency to have a separate hit point bar for their horse. What's your deal? Hey, there we go. Oh, no, uh, no bonus. That's a shame. So no bonus, break's fine. Probably not going to win this one. Whew. Well, I mean, I got the stagger. Um, I've just <laughs> I didn't realize until halfway through the fight I'd forgotten to summon my mimic. So, I mean, this probably won't be a difficult one. But I'm a bit disappointed I didn't beat this first try. Uh, I was a bit wasteful with my... Uh, but wasteful with my healing. I wonder if there was a weak point for the stagger, but I just couldn't see it. I probably should have gone for the horse butt, like you say. But um, this does continue my my kind of like weird disappointment with the fact that there doesn't seem to be much of a difference in different places between like who's there and why. Actually, I should probably go back to Godric's rune. That's the one I've actually been preferring for most of the game. I like the I like the general bonuses. Um, hmm, what else we got that might be useful? Ah, oh, it's Jack and also shit. Come on, Mimic. Let's have an easy time. Oh, weird. Why has my Mimic decided to use Rot Arrows? Normally it's all two-hander all the time. Because when you both have two-handers and you really fucking go for it, uh, you tend to get staggers pretty easy.
guns are. It really does trivialize a lot of fights, uh, but I am not interested in uh, trying and failing the same thing over and over. I probably would have beaten that without the Mimic tier, but, you know, it's easy for me to say that. Um, less easy for me to prove it. But uh, as I've mentioned in the past, just streaming at all gives me like a 30% skill uh, debuff. Uh, can I? What's... Are we good? So no grace? Okay. That's weird. I wonder why I couldn't use that. Any theories on the mystery of the unusable grace? What happens if I teleport back? Then come back down here. I don't want to waste 200,000 uh, runes regardless. Because leveling up right now is ruinously expensive. Ha <laughs> ha! There you go, your one mandatory pun for the stream. Right, do I have enough stuff to... Oh, hey, did she drop a... No, she didn't. Huh, okay. One more of those, I think. I try not to waste these. I tend to only spend these when I need to buy something or, or when I want to just, uh, just get enough to level up again. 125, was that enough? It was almost exactly enough. Fantastic. Barely any going to waste. That's ideal. Oh, yeah. I win at runes. Actually, I've seen some people theorize about what the runes might or might not be, ultimately. My personal theory is that they're tiny scraps of the, the Elden Ring. The ring itself, like, you know, the great runes are what the ring broke into, right? Or what the various people, different, different demigods have as a part of it. So I figure, you know, the ring itself is constructed out of vast, vast circles of text. You know, strings of, strings of runes. Uh comprising the great runes and the lesser runes and just rune runes. This goes surprisingly chill. Um, because ultimately, um, the Elden Ring is a physical expression of the Golden Order, and the Golden Order is kind of the correct format of reality, the nature of reality, the pattern of reality, and its various laws. Everything in the world is a part of the great pattern Everything in the entire world is a part of the Elden Ring itself. Oh, it works this one. It works this time. Hmm. So, given that, it makes sense that you take that part of what or who they are. You know? Someone's position in the great tapestry of existence is represented by their runes, their, their component of, of the ring itself. So it stands to reason that you would take that from them when you kill them when you render them irrelevant. Uh, and it also stands to reason that there are these physical components that you can collect that are runes. And they're just bigger chunks. They're just bigger chunks of the pattern that fell out of the goddamn sky when the ring broke. Because the ring was, at one point, physically up there in the sky. And at one point it... Oh, buddy. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm not going to say I haven't done that from time to time. Anyway, I think there's two NPC quest lines for me to catch up with in here, so I'll have to keep an eye out for them. Snake? Snake! Hmm, actually this seems super familiar. <laughs> this reminds me of, um, of Lordran in Dark Souls 1. Oh, okay. I was expecting this lift not to work yet. Didn't expect underground tomb. In short, try down. No noble ahead. Liar ahead. Okay, interesting. Aha! Ha ha ha! This is lovely. What do we got over there? That looks like a noble of blood. 
Oh wait, no, that's uh, okay. That's one of Michaela's sword people, the the rot cleansing knights or whatever they're called. Okay, so that's over there. So I should clearly go back that way. So first off, thing thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look underneath the lift because that's what you always do. Uh, excuse me. Oh shit. <laughs> oh, okay. Hmm. I can't send it back up, apparently. Oh, hmm, okay, it worked that time. That's weird. Welp. Anyway, I suspect that's the start of the, the Mega Dungeon, and it might be the final Mega Dungeon in the game. What killed all these guys? Oh, people falling off the lift, I guess. Just, just idiots. The terminally clumsy. Clumsily terminating their existences through terminal velocity. What have we got up here? Oh, oh, that's a hell of a ladder. Is there ever going to be a mimic chest? I've been playing this game so much, and I've I've played 130 hours and explored fucking everywhere and there has not been a single mimic chest although there have been like three trapped chests so i'm like is it just not a thing in this one but i just know i know with 100 percent certainty that the minute i come to believe there will not be a mimic chest the very next chest i open is going to eat my face to death i just know it in my heart of hearts it's I've, I, after a certain point in my 120 hours of gameplay, I became willing to look up spoilers, and I spoiled myself on several aspects of the game on purpose because my god, it's fucking huge. But hmm, now I definitely saw someone's saw someone's phantom walking around down there. Am I really gonna fall for this? Oh, 2,350. Bollocks. I would <laughs> I would not have fallen for that if so many people hadn't upvoted it. Are you kidding me? I have found things under elevators. There are things hidden under elevators in most of the Dark Souls games at various points. And I have found things under elevators in Elden Ring a couple of times. Um, there are multiple catacombs which have secrets hidden under secret bonus stuff hidden underneath, and there are also multiple catacombs where, in order to progress, it is necessary uh, to to go uh, under a, an elevator. Why did you say that ladder was? Were you thinking of that ladder? Because that's the one we took to get down here in the first place. I don't know if I've ever found an ordinary elevator with something hidden underneath it. I have found a couple of ordinary elevators with jumping off points, which is another Souls tradition. So I have had a habit of just looking underneath them no matter what, but I usually, like, I would not have thought there was something under this one based on how I saw it when it was on the way down there. If not for... This asshole. If I downvote it, does it lose an appraisal or gain an appraisal? <laughs> I think it loses one. Perhaps here. For oh, motherfucker. Is that what it looks like? No. Miyazaki. Miyazaki-san, please. Not another poison. Not another poison swamp. You've got to be kidding me. Those are just ordinary trees, right? Please, I can't take it. <laughs> He can't keep getting away with this dog gif. Now, based on my experiences with this game so far, I'm supposed to walk across this bridge and think, oh, that looks like a tough guy. I'll fight that guy. And halfway across the bridge, something else is going to land on me, like a dragon or a, or a giant lightning bolt or... See, that's what I was wondering. I was wondering if that's why, like, so many have... Actually, these guys are pretty easy to beat with my usual tactic. Because the thing is, 
the Moonlight Greatsword is heavy enough that it um, staggers most enemies. Well, it's been a while since I fought one of these. Uh, out of their animations, which means that if they're doing any kind of slowish or even medium speed animation, you can just chain jump attack them and uh, you then they will eventually become busted. You know what? This does seem familiar, but it's not because this is a location from any specific previous FromSoft game. It's because they have very specific influences that they love to bring back time and again, which is why they also keep bringing back the same themes time and again. Seek armament. No, no, I've played this in... Hey, it's her! Fantastic! I knew she'd be around here somewhere. Again we meet. I can only surmise our purposes are aligned. In which case, allow me to explain myself. I am of Melania's blood, but in what capacity I know not. I could be sister, daughter, or an offshoot. Whatever the case, though, I am certain of a kinship between us. I like you too. So this is the NPC whose questline allows you to escape having to do the Lord of Chaos ending uh, if you have inadvertently locked yourself into it like I have. <clears throat> but there were many steps to get this far and there's many steps more. So, as part of that quest, it involved finding a magic needle, which, were, when inserted into her arm or somewhere, gave her the ability to no longer be infected by the rot while she was slowly dying of said rot. So, there's definitely... I suspect that the end of her quest line will involve me using that needle to escape the Lord of Chaos ending. But I don't know if she is a sister rather than some kind of distant descendant. Maybe she is a sister, I don't know. Maybe I'll find that out later. But it feels odd for a deity to have a mortal sister, especially considering some of the secrets I've uncovered so far, such as the fact that... Um, the main the main queen deity, whatever her name was, the, the only real god in this setting, um, as opposed to all of the various demigods, the one who married Radagon. Um... Is that Mikella? The special one. The big the big queen. Anyway, her whole deal is that um Uh she split herself in half and married her other half. Quite <laughs> literally her other half. Um yeah, Marika. Marika is the sort of like omni deity. And I assume to be sort of like the physical expression of the Golden Order and the Erd Tree and all of this stuff, although I don't know for sure yet. Those guys look kind of... They don't look tough, but I'm... that's usually what results in me getting my ass kicked. Ah, they explode. Cool. Okay, good to know. This always happens with my first steps into a new dungeon. Is that, I mean, does that make sense? I mean, she's, she's not one person with aspects of different body types, right? She's she's one person who split herself mystically into two specific body types, right? Um, because, like, Radigan left her and married Renala at some point, because that's how Rani happened. I don't know, it's very... The shit that God get, gods get up to in this is very Greek myth. You know, there's a lot of, like, people being born from one another's foreheads and turning into sea foam. Oh, I've... Oh, okay, I've had my wizard stuff unequipped this entire time. That's not very wizardly of me. Now, do they explode if I kill them? They do not. Fantastic. I've actually found two different crystal tears that when mixed into a physic will allow me to explode exactly like that and it has the same animation and everything. C 
See, I can never tell because I am incredibly autistic. So you might have been making a joke or you might have been making a legitimate analysis of this work of art. Um, so I just kind of have to guess at what people mean when they say things. Haha, <laughs> that looks like balls. <laughs> oh, I love being a mature individual. know about that history or linguistic peculiarity perhaps is the better term oh oh the, the dynamic shadows oh that's lovely that's absolutely delightful Desperately trying to find some kind of a word that might imply something about Ah fuck it, I can't be bothered. Anyway, it reminds me of the Lord Vassal. It isn't the Lord Vassal, but it reminds me of it. Which is a thing from Dark Souls 1 and also Dark Souls 3's expansion. What is the Lord Vessel? Well, it is the vessel in which you keep a lord. Unlike this guy who's about to go bye bye. These guys are exactly the same to every other man at arms in the entire game. Why am I struggling with them? So, this is the brace of the Halig Tree, which is the final mega dungeon, or the penultimate mega dungeon, I think. I'm not going to call them uh, legacy dungeons, because I think that's dumb. If they, if they, if I didn't know about this game, and I just had heard that they were legacy dungeons, what I would assume was that they were dungeons from earlier in the, like, FromSoft series. Um, that were, like, ported into this as, like, a special, special thing. Oh my god! A bug knocked over a candlestick! I didn't know they were allowed to be vandals! Do you think Socrates ever explored Plato's cave? I might actually need more uh, stamina. Oh, he looks tough. Oh, that's nasty. Make it very difficult to backstab him by putting a pot behind him. This one does not seem a threat, so I'm going to leave him alone. Oh, I take it back. Hey, Art. Yep, I'm still going. I've just started exploring Elphael, Brace of the Halig Tree, which is a place. Oh, 
which I am going to explore obsessively the same way I always do all of the mega dungeons where I find all of their secrets all by myself and never look anything up. Because while I might not be amazing at the combat in a FromSoft game, I am pretty good at the exploration. No explosions for you, my good sir. Oh hey, I finally get to use a stone sword key. I've got like 20 of the damn things. Is this one going to be the mimic? There's always, there's got to be one. There's got to be one mimic somewhere in the game. Ooh. Another spell I can't use. Actually, I was just thinking that the other place is up higher in the Halig tree. Hmm, hey, what happens if I... I probably could... I... Hmm. If I went back and switched all of my flasks to be magic, I could probably blast that thing to death from here without much issue. Hit me from here. How close can I get to the edge before? Ow, fuck. That close. I've never had one of these things spot my plan before. Alright, I'm going to take two seconds to go switch the lights on because it's dark as hell in here now. See, I was so fast that I didn't even need to switch to the uh, Be Right Back panel. I'm an incredibly diligent explorer. I actively, I genuinely do actually try and find every single little secret there is to find. Um, I'm not going to fight that just yet. That's probably going to be an absolute nightmare to fight if I get down to where it is, especially without access to... Oh, hey, another wizard. You can always tell the wizards because they've got stupid hats. But yeah, I, uh, I kind of genuinely feel like since my second bout of COVID, my like capacity as a streamer and as a Let's Player has gone down quite a bit. My brain... I can think fast, but not while playing a game anymore. Like I don't, I don't make the really like funny chains of words that I used to make that, that made me so happy whenever I would hear them while editing, and I would be like, "Yeah, that's funny. I'm funny." Instead, I just I ramble and then complain about how I'm not good at streaming anymore. I really hope that I don't have permanent brain damage, but you never know. Oh, he spotted me. Oh, it looks like I have found part of the other side of a shortcut. Always good to know. Hmm. It's kind of the only place for me to go. If I try and climb up there, he'll laser me. might take a minute. But also, if you don't watch a lot of streamers, but you do watch my streams, then I am very flattered and pleased. And I appreciate it. This is going to be the slowest possible way to fight this thing, but it's also really my only option now that I'm stuck here. Um, I don't see anywhere else I can jump to where I'm actually going to survive, and I can't climb up the ladder. And if I jump down and fight that thing mano a mano, it will be difficult, because I am mostly a sorcerer, after all. Oh, 
I'm probably going to have to cut this stream short fairly soon because I'm definitely losing my capacity to focus. But I'll probably leave exploring the rest of this place until my next stream, which will hopefully be either maybe tomorrow, maybe the day after, depending on scheduling for my household. Um, Oh, that's a good question. I never tried, I never experimented with the carrion stuff. Uh, I mean, with the carrion retaliation stuff, just because I... Uh, it just seemed like a lot of effort, really. <laughs> and if we can be, we know one thing about my characterization, for sure, it's that I am bad at making an effort nowadays. So just don't have the focus. I wonder if there's... No, I had to charge that. When I run out of mana, I'll go down and fight it. Uh, manho and manho, as they say. Oops. Assuming I don't die beforehand, in which case I won't. It's actually possible to stagger these things, and it's not even very difficult. I uh, wonder if this would be more effective. Oh no! Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh well. That's the way it goes. Oh god, there's more of those things. I hate those. Alright, well I think that I'm going to, going to call this a night. I'm feeling pretty unwell. And uh, also my voice is starting to go. So that's going to be all from me for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry to cut it short right after you got back, Art. Uh, but hopefully next time will be a bit easier. Uh, I hope you join me again. I hope you enjoy my YouTube channel, anyone who's watching but doesn't already. Although I suspect everybody already does uh, know and watch. Because I have had a consistent six streamers, uh, all uh, six viewers all afternoon. So that's going to be all from me. Thank you so much to my Patreon patrons as well, which I sometimes forget to say. Hopefully, in the next few months, I'll be able to go back to kind of being the way I was to some extent, but I'm not making any promises right now. Anyway, that really is all from me. Thank you so much for watching everyone who's here and anyone who's watching this on YouTube several days from now. Bye!